Uh, so hi everyone, my name is Paul Low. I'm a assistant research scientist in the Center for Healthcare Delivery Science at Nemours, um, and I have uh, my uh, multiple PI, co-PI on this project with me today as well. Um, uh, Lee Fan, who, uh, and so today we're going to be talking about our project, which is uh, the impact of COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic on families and pediatric healthcare delivery. Um, it was uh, recently funded through the Excel uh, Rapid Science Two-Step Grant. Um, and we're going to kind of be splitting it up. So I'll be talking about the first part, and then Lee will just kind of talk about the second part. And so we're just really going to be talking about the focus of the project, as well as the specific aims and some of the methods that we're using. Um, so, as everyone here is probably very uh, aware, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has had a significant impact on uh, our daily life. Uh, it has really impacted, uh, you know, how we go about and do our day-to-day -day jobs. It has also impacted um, how families are um, interacting not only with each other, but also a lot of these systems that they were used to engaging in, so the school system, the healthcare system, all of their peer support networks. Um, and there's uh, a limited amount of research on how uh, pandemics tend to affect uh, the psychosocial outcomes of families, but we do know that uh, following pandemics, like things like the H1N1 uh, flu or the SARS pandemics, we do tend to see uh, families, particular, uh, particularly parents, but also children, uh, experience adverse mental health outcomes. So they report increased depression, increased anxiety, post-traumatic stress symptoms. Um, and so we would anticipate that this, we're going to see this with the pandemic as well. Um, but we also know that when families are, uh, we also know that the pandemic is going to have, a, have disrupted uh, our normal kind of routine health care because of Things like restrictions on visitation, or um, uh, you know, uh, you can't have as many people coming into clinics. Um, you may have to have a decrease in, in the number of providers and patients you can see. So the routine healthcare that families are used to receiving has been disrupted. Um, but we also wanted to look in our project at the relationship between the psychosocial effect of uh, the pandemic and disruptions in healthcare. So we know that families are parents and patients who tend to have more post-traumatic stress symptoms tend to avoid those things that cause them anxiety. So if you are in a car accident, you may avoid driving a car in the future. Um, and the healthcare environment could be a potentially uh, traumatic, uh, like uh, a potential stressor that might actually exacerbate some of these uh, the psychosocial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. So what our project aimed to do was to examine how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected psychosocial functioning in families, how it has impacted the disruption in uh, pediatric health care, but also how the disruption in pediatric health care is associated with uh, the psychosocial impact on families. So we were thinking that families who have a, uh, perceive a greater uh, impact, psychosocial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic would probably be less likely to attend their regularly scheduled doctor's visits, maybe less likely to attend in-person visits, or maybe even delay healthcare or urgent things. Um, so I was going to um, kind of, so we have, we have two kind of main parts of our study, um, and Lee's gonna kind of talk more specifically about them now, um, but they, um, the first one is kind of more of a population-based study that's using EHR data, and the second one is going to be actually recruiting a cohort and following them for a year to examine uh, the association between uh, you know, the psychosocial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, but also how the pandemic relates to disruptions in healthcare. So, it's all yours. Great. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Okay. Um, so our specific aim one um, is really looking at a population-based con case control study. And what we want to do is um, document the extent of disruptions to healthcare due to COVID-19 among the pediatric population in the Delaware Valley. Um, 
And so our methods are, we're really kind of looking at everyone, all comers. So all patients zero to 21 years of age with a scheduled visit to the Nemours, Delaware Valley um, location of Nemours. Um, and we're gonna pull healthcare utilization data from each month after the onset of the pandemic and compare it to healthcare utilization in the corresponding month during the prior year. Um, as our primary outcome, we're gonna look at rate of incomplete ambulatory visits, um, and that we're defining as a cancellation or no-show to a scheduled visit without rescheduling. Um, obviously, we'll be looking at a lot of secondary outcomes as well, um, with healthcare utilization data, including vaccination rates, ER visits, urgent care visits, um, but really for our primary outcome, we wanted to look at rate of incomplete ambulatory visits um, for the reasons that Paul described. Um, we took a quick look at preliminary data um, just to kind of see what that might look like, um, which I think is really interesting. Um, and so not surprising probably to a lot of the clinicians in the group, um, we found that approximately 20% of patients in April 2019 had an incomplete ambulatory visit compared to 58% of patients in April 2020. Um, so we think that um, we'll probably see similar trends, um, but that that may vary over the course of the year post pandemic. So we're really excited to take a look at that data. Paul, do you wanna go ahead to the next one? And so for our specific aims two and three, um, we're gonna be conducting a prospective cohort study. Um, and specific aims two and three really are aimed at looking at describing the extent of exposure to and impact of COVID-19 on the pediatric population in the Delaware Valley with the survey that we created. Um, and then to also look at the association between individual family levels of exposure to and impact of COVID-19 um, on disruptions to their pediatric healthcare. Um, so you can see kind of our proposed uh, timeline. It's a little bit shifted now probably because we're still waiting on official um, NIH approval to start. Um, but we're planning to look at a cohort of established patients with scheduled visits in April 2020, um, which kind of is where we felt like the pandemic really kind of took hold in Delaware and really started to affect uh, patient care. Um, we're hoping to um, sample about 3,000 families um, for uh, during the next few months um, using a survey that we created, like I said, to uh, evaluate the impact of COVID-19 on families um, over the next few months. And then also we hope to do a second survey administration um, in January and March, which is about 10 to 12 months after pandemic onset. Um, and then obviously pulling data from the EHR to look at healthcare utilization again. Um, so that's sort of our study. Um, Paul, do you wanna to go to the next page, I guess? Um, so in the interest of time, um, that's sort of a brief overview of what we're proposing. Um, we're hoping to start really soon. Um, and a lot of people helped um, with the proposal and continuing to help with kind of our thinking about implementation of the study, including a lot of people from the Center for Healthcare Delivery Science um, and bioinformatics as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if people have questions. Yes. 